One side of the screen is using scale to frame size, while the other is using set to frame size. Can you tell me which one is which? If you can, awesome. Just let me know in the comments down below. But let's look at some more references. And because this is somewhat of a filmmaking channel, it wouldn't be complete without looking at some coffee B-roll. In order to spot some of these differences easier, let's zoom in by 250%. Still can't see a difference? Well, how about we look at a picture? Here's A and here's B. Let's zoom in. Here's A and here's B. Hopefully YouTube's compression is allowing you to see the differences in which method retains more resolution. So if you wanna know the difference between scale and set to frame size and which one you should be using, stay tuned. To begin with, if you're unfamiliar with what scale or set to frame size do, it's just a quick way for Premiere Pro to automatically fit your footage, whether it be big or small, to the dimensions of the sequence that you're working in. Let me show you what I mean. Just like any great YouTube B-roll montage, this 1920 by 1080 sequence is filled to the brim with copious amounts of black liquid caffeinated gold. But an issue that many of you may be facing, like myself, is that some of these pictures and video clips are at different resolutions than my sequence. So one way to quickly size these clips to the correct dimensions is to highlight them all, right click, and hit scale to frame size. Now all my clips that were at a higher resolution like 4K are automatically scaled down to fit into the dimensions of my HD sequence. Same goes for my video clips that were at lower resolutions scaling up to fit my sequence settings. And with those pictures, you'll probably see some black bars, but all of them have been scaled proportionally to fit the entire photo in the frame of my sequence as well. The biggest factor to point out here is that Premiere has rasterized every single one of these clips so their scale is represented Presented at 100%, which is super convenient, right? That means they all have a similar starting point. Well, not so fast. Herein lies the issue. Because those files were rasterized down to the sequence settings of 1920 by 1080, all of the files that were at higher resolutions are now being read as HD files or 1920 by 1080 instead of their higher resolutions. This becomes a problem if you were planning on scaling up any of those photos or video clips that were at higher resolutions. Let me show you. Let's take this photo for example. Because it has black bars, let's say I wanted to scale it up so it filled the whole screen. Now when I hit scale to frame size, it effectively made the scale 100% and it fit it to the frame. But now when I scale this up, it's going to be scaling up a 1920 by 1080 version of this picture as opposed to the much higher resolution that it actually is of 3024 by 4032. So we'll get something like this. But I'm going to duplicate this, and instead of doing scale to frame size, now I'm going to do set to frame size. Now, instead of this being rasterized and being read as 100%, it's the actual equivalent of if I were to go over here to this scale bar manually and fit it to the frame. But Premiere just does it for you automatically by doing set to frame size. The best thing about this is that I've maintained the resolution of the original photo, and if I were to scale this up so it fills the frame, it's the same as if I were taking the original photo and filling the frame with it. Here is my set to frame size versus my scale to frame size. There is a big difference right here in the resolution drop from scale to frame size and set to frame size. I hope you can see the difference with YouTube's compression, but here in person I can definitely tell. So in pretty much all instances, you're going to wanna to choose set to frame size because it's going to maintain the original resolution of your files, whether you're scaling them up or scaling them down. It also has the added benefit of giving you a clear indication of how much you are scaling it up because the number that you're manipulating is the actual percentage that you're scaling it up or scaling it down. When you do scale to frame size, it just changes everything to 100% and you don't know if you're scaling up lower or higher resolution footage because you don't have a reference to what the starting point was. A big tip to save you a bunch of time is to assign the action of set to frame size as a keyboard shortcut. For me, I've set it up on my keyboard as shift option command G. Now you may think that that's a whole bunch of modifiers just to do this action, but there's a reasoning behind it. And that's because when you're using After Effects, the same type of effect of fitting your objects to the height of your composition is that keyboard shortcut. So whenever I'm in After Effects, I have the same muscle memory to hit shift option command G to fit my files to the compositions dimensions. 
Hopefully by this time in the video, you can tell that everything in the beginning of the video under the example of A was set to frame size and everything that was under B was scaled to frame size. Personally, I could only tell the difference when I really punched in, but now you know why you can tell the difference of the resolutions when you punch in. If this video was helpful, don't forget to leave me a like and leave a comment down below if you did get the right answer for the beginning of the video. Let me know what you want me to tutorialize next. Tutorialize, tutorialize, it's kind of hard to say. All right, until next time, I hope you guys are out there living a life of abundance. Bye. Oh, and uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed, if this was helpful. Love you.